This is the Titan Web Builder. If you remember, first thing we saw in the last video was logging in. On the left side of the builder, you can find the gear icon, and the gear icon will take you to project settings. Let's go to user access to define our login. In this use case, we use Titan's Smart V, which allows you to log in based on a record. So enable Smart V and click the gear icon for the settings. In subsequent videos, we will explain in more detail how Smart V works. Today, we'll just look at it briefly. In the configurations, we see that we are using the contact object, looking up a contact ID and email. For now, we will skip all of the rest of the configurations and generate Smart V login. Here's how you can add a title to a project, like this heading right here. We will go to the pink plus icon, which will open up the elements palette. We can go to text and then drag a text element onto the layout. And then click on the pink gear to configure your text. You can see here that we have a form element. Form help us to keep our elements aligned. Again, in the palette, go to form, choose the form element, which is the second one. Select how many columns and rows you would like. And then drag elements into your form. Buttons, text input, etc. In our example, both our form and our heading are placed on a strip. A strip is the basic canvas element where all other elements are placed. Now let's look at our modal window for logging a case. On the layer list, you will see the modal is called add case and it's hidden. I'll click the eyeball icon to show the modal window. There are different fields. There's a file upload element and a submit button on the modal. How do we add a new modal? Again, navigate to the Titan elements. Go to containers, scroll down, find modal, and drag it onto the canvas. Then add your new elements, such as text, input fields, etc. I'll close this one. And now let's look at the existing add cases modal. We have a submit button. The submit button is doing a number of things. On the submit button, we can click the link icon on this menu or go to the gear, interactivity, configure on click action. On the start element, click the little plus. This brings up a window that shows the various nodes and actions that we can add. In our example, our first action is a Salesforce action. When I go into the Salesforce action, I can select from previously created pushes or gets. So if we go to the Salesforce integration, we can see gets and pushes. What we are doing in this action is a push to create a new case and a new file. So you will click Create New. You will select your object, in this example, the case. And then you will map your fields. In the mapping, on the left side, you see the list of Salesforce fields. Those are fields in your CRM. On the right side, you can select elements from your Titan project. 
So let's say we want to map the company field in, on the Salesforce contact. We'll find company, and then we will select the element from our Titan project that we want to map. That is also called company. That is the company field on the modal. So let's close out of this and let's look and see how the complete mapping was done on the already existing push. I'll go to mapping. I'll apply a filter to see only the mapped fields. Here you can see that we are saving as the contact ID, the smart V ID. That's the record ID of the logged in user. We are saving an account ID and we are saving case type, case origin, subject, description, engineering, requisition number, and product from the input elements on our Titan project. Great. After our Salesforce action, we first reset the state of our add case modal so that the next time it's open, it will be clear and ready for additional input. We then hide the modal. We then show the user a thank you message. And we refresh the power table to show the newly added case. Now let's look at the My Details page. On the My Details page, you can find the stepper, which is an element out of the containers. Go to the plus icon, containers, drag the stepper onto your page. From here, we'll add a form to our stepper and the various fields on personal details, on contact information, and on business information. Let's see how the condition for business information is configured. I click on my field that impacts whether or not that step is to be shown. I'll then click on the gear icon. I will go to conditions. I will go to configure conditions. In this rule within configure conditions, I have an if statement. This condition says, if this is a company account equals Boolean true, then we want to show the company information step. Otherwise, we hide it. So if it's true on affected elements, I'll filter for set. We want to show the stepper business information step. If it's not true, then we want to hide the stepper business information step. So that is how I can, we configure the conditions of this field and our action flow. Finally, on this step, we configured Titan to push this data to Salesforce. So I'll go to my stepper on interactivity, my on finish action, and this on finish action contains a Salesforce action to update the contact details. Then we show a message thanking the user for submitting their information and redirect to the home page. Again, if we click on the Salesforce action, this is integration action number one, where we update the contact details. Let's have a quick look. Salesforce integration push number one. And again, this is updating the contact. using the newly entered information. Finally, 
on the My Details page, when that page is opened, some data is pre-populated. For example, the user's first name and last name. How is this done? Let's go to the page load actions and see. So I'll go to Pages, My Details, Configure Actions. We want to run these actions every time the page is loaded. And the action that runs is again a Salesforce action. This one is a get. Let's look at the get. I'll go to Salesforce integration. It's get number one. Get contact info for details page. We are getting information from the contact object. The filter condition is where the contact ID equals the smart VID. And in mapping, we map fields from the located record to elements on our Titan web project. So every time the page loads, Titan will get this information from Salesforce and update those fields accordingly. In your use case, this can come from any object and field combination. You can achieve any use case you want according to your processes. Name it accordingly. And we're finished. Thank you very much. That's how it's done.